For most of human history, our ancestors relied on very basic forms of energy. Human muscle, animal muscle and the burning of biomass such as wood and crops. But the industrial revolution unlocked a whole new energy source, fossil fuels. Fossil energy has been a fundamental driver of the technological, social and economic progress which has followed. Energy is fundamental and a bedrock of human civilization. And recently, energy prices have been rising all over the world, especially in America. Gas prices have reached record high levels of $4.7 per gallon on the national average, but paradoxically, crude oil prices on the global markets are not that high. In Europe, it's a catastrophe almost because not just fuel, but the price of natural gas has gone through the roof. The price of natural gas in Europe hit an all-time high record on March 7, briefly touching 345 euros per megawatt hour. That's equivalent in energy to prices of $600 of oil per barrel. Before the last 12 months, when the European gas market was rocked first by a compounding series of market trends and mishaps, and now by Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the prices had stayed roughly in the range of 15 to 25 euros per megawatt hour for a decade. Energy is becoming inaccessible and expensive. So in this video we will talk about why gas prices are high despite crude oil prices per barrel are low and are we running out of oil and gas and what happens if we do. Petroleum prices have reached its peaks never seen before but that's not the case for crude oil. Gas prices have many factors with the primary factor being the cost of crude oil. The price of crude oil has surged since Russia invaded Ukraine. Before the invasion, oil prices were fluctuating from $60 to $93 per barrel. And when the invasion started, it shot up to $130 and have subsequently come down to about $100. Interestingly, the recent spike in the price of oil is not a record high. The record high was set in June 2008, when oil topped over $140 per barrel. Although in this year, crude oil prices never hit the record set in 2008, gas prices have surpassed what was seen in 2008. One of the reasons is that taxes are higher than they were back in 2008. So the price of fuel that you see at the retail, that's not just the price of oil, which is the foundation, but also includes additional tax. There are also additional regulations that have occurred since then, like in California, they now have a carbon trading tax, which is also built on that, so the refiners have to pay and purchase carbon credits, so these credits have gone into the price of fuel. If you look at this map, oil prices are cheaper in the states, where politicians are tend to be climate change skeptics and didn't install extensive carbon trading tax. Another example of the Atlantic, Norway has one of the biggest oil reserves and exporter of fossil fuels in Europe. But fuel prices are one of the highest in the world because Norway heavily taxes its oil industry. There is a road use tax on petrol and the CO2 tax. The road use tax on petrol is 5 knock per liter and CO2 tax on petrol is about 1 knock per liter. So roughly 70 cents tax on a liter of fuel. So on American measurements, it would be about $2.6 tax on a gallon of gas alone, compared to Texas, $0.38 cents tax per gallon, and in California, $0.79 cents per gallon. That's one of the reasons why Norway has the highest electric car adoption rate in the world. And one of the interesting questions is, are we running out of oil? Well, if we treat it as a simple issue of mathematics, we can in theory work out when we run out of oil. We simply deduct the number of new reserves we discover each year from the amount we consume each year for our net reduction in reserves and then divide that number by the number of provable reserves that we have. There are lots of problems with that because for technical reasons, nobody can ever agree on provable reserves reserves, but let's plug some rough numbers in for fun. Each year we consume roughly 35 billion barrels of oil. New oil reserves fluctuate a bit, but the most accurate figures we have is for 2018, which was 12 billion barrels of oil. 
So each year we are consuming roughly 23 billion barrels of oil from our net reserves. As I mentioned, oil reserves are a bit touchy to calculate, but the world's proven reserves are currently around 1650 billion barrels. So by dividing one number with another, we can get an estimate of just under 72 years. However, there are lots of problems with the raw number. Firstly, despite the move to green energy, oil consumption tends to climb each year because the number of developing countries is increasing. Conversely, the number of reserves discovered each year tends to go down. Secondly, what counts as a provable reserve changes constantly. In theory, as oil becomes more expensive and technology gets better, oil that is currently regarded as inaccessible will get booked as provable reserves. And finally, nobody knows what the global shift towards the green energy will do to all this, but surely it will not leave it unchanged. There is also an argument that we will never run out of oil. In 1974, it was widely predicted that oil would run out before 2000. Since then, despite using more reserves every year, estimates of reserves have gone up. And now, even the most conservative estimates talk in many, many decades. In part because of the new discoveries, in part because of fracking, and in part because previously exhausted fields had only around 15% of their oil removed. Technological advancements have led going back to old oil fields and extracting far more than it was originally possible. Even if we run out of crude oil on the ground, there will always be oil in the nature to our disposal. However, the cost of getting certain types of fuel will be more difficult and as a result, less cost efficient. There are, for example, oil sands, there are lots of oil in them. The Alberta tar sands contain more reserves than the rest of the world combined. However, extracting the oil from the sand is very intensive. A lot of reserves require a lot of energy to get the oil out. It costs about $40 a barrel to extract synthetic crude oil from oil sand, whereas the cost of extracting light crude from the oil well is about $1 a barrel. Additionally, there is something called an oil shale. This stuff is everywhere. The Rocky Mountains are full of it. However, most of it is rock. It takes about 10 barrels of oil to get one barrel of synthetic crude out of oil shale. So it goes back not running out of it, but when will oil production no longer be able to keep up the oil consumption? And the answer to that question is no one really knows. It's definitely going to happen as you can see every oil field reaches a peak and then starts declining. Here is what happened to anthracite coal, which is as close to pure carbon as you are going to find in nature. For example, the US used to lead the world in the extraction of the anthracite coal, but it reached peak production in the 1920s. Luckily, demand for those dropped because it's expensive to extract, and locomotives went to diesel, cars to petrol, and steel mills went to natural gas. So in general, the concept of running out is often misstated. What most economists talk about is peak. At some point, the amount of oil being extracted will be less than what was extracted the previous year, and this trend will continue. As the stone age ended not because people run out of stones, but because we found better ways. So it's safe to say the oil age will end long before the world runs out of oil. I made a video in a similar premise on why a lot of countries buy hundreds of billions of dollars worth of weapons from other countries instead of producing themselves. Why spend so much money on imports? The answer is very tricky and quite interesting. Please check this video to know about it more. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all these Patreon supporters. Your support means a lot. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. I try to do as concisely as possible since YouTube doesn't like long and thorough videos. I mostly do videos with little more background analysis and little longer. Please check them out as well.